Begin with continuing coverage tonight from Manhattan, where former President Donald Trump has pleaded not guilty to 34 counts of falsifying business records. This plea came during the arraignment late today. Six on your side anchor Don Hudson has been following this throughout the process. Yeah, and there certainly is a lot to follow, Bo and Lori. Just in the last hour, we're getting better answers about the specifics of what's behind the charges and why Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg says he filed them. Now, keep in mind, television cameras were not allowed in the courtroom and until prosecutors' news conference after the fact, that's when we didn't really know about the charges until then. Uh, we knew that they were claims of falsifying business records. Now, Bragg says the alleged felony here is lying through those business records to cover up other crimes that Mr. Trump knew the real uses of that money, part of which involves former porn actress Stormy Daniels and payments to her. Bragg says Trump signed off on records listing the money as going to attorney Michael Cohen for legal services. When, in fact, Bragg says it was the, to repay Cohen for the $130,000 meant to go to Daniels so that she would be quiet about her contact with Trump. That another payment, Bragg argues, point to what's called catch-and-kill schemes between Trump, Cohen, and a tabloid publisher to buy up and suppress negative stories leading up to the 2016 presidential election. That is a violation of New York law. The participant scheme was illegal. The scheme violated New York election law, which makes it a crime to conspire to promote a candidacy by unlawful means. That is why Mr. Trump made false statements about his payments to Mr. Cohen. He could not simply say that the payments were a reimbursement for Mr. Cohen's payments to, Sandy, to Stormy Daniels. To do so, to make that true statement, would have been to admit a crime. Now, Mr. Trump has pleaded not guilty to all these charges. His next court appearance may be in December. The trial, if there is one, wouldn't happen until next year. Trump, by the way, scheduled to return to his home in Florida at Mar-a-Lago. This evening, he's going to give some remarks. At least 500 prominent supporters have been invited, with some of the most pro-Trump congressional Republicans expected to attend as well. We will cover that and bring you that tonight at 11. All right, Don, thank you. And some of our Tennessee elected representatives are weighing in right now. Senator Marsha Blackburn reacted by tweeting, President Trump's indictment is a gross abuse of power. There is no limit to what the left will do to bring down President Trump. Representative Diana Harshbarger says today is a dark day for our country. The unjust arraignment of President Trump sets a dangerous precedent.